If I don't get an answer, I'm just standing here. In that case, we'd have to charge you, sir. With what? Loitering with intent? Obstructing an officer? You wouldn't want that. Excuse me. Not like your country, I'm afraid, sir. No banging away with guns. Well, I'm for peace and quiet myself. Now, what's all this about? Well, that's what they all say. Puzzled and innocent. Don't you know? If I knew, I wouldn't be asking. Chief Inspector Franklin wanted a word with you. Quick. So here you are. And if you can't remember what villainy you've been up to just lately, he'll tell you. All right, Percy, tread on him. I'm sure you can get away with it, you know, sir. Sergeant, I told you before, the only certainty in this life is a small tombstone. So let's have a look at this one, Gill man. You won't go for it, you know, you won't. You'll have to. Sit down, Miguel. I'm Chief Inspector Franklin. This is Sergeant Jackson. Seems to me somebody else ought to be here, like my lawyer. He's got a guilty conscience. He's normal. I don't know about that, but I prefer to be legal. You're an alien of no fixed employment or address on a doubtful work permit secured by improper influence. Now, you could, and uh, I say could, be engaged in uh, breaches of national security or guilty of offences committed outside this country. I'm not sure you can shout for a lawyer if these are true. Now, you may, and uh, I say may, have a right to some representation, but it'll take us all three days to find out what that right is. OK, what's the charge? Well, did I say anything about a charge? Not that I heard. Thank you, sir. How's business? Mm, it's all right. You haven't had a job in a month, and the last one didn't pay laundry money. Then what are you asking me for? Nothing wrong with that. That's not illegal. And frankly, Franklin, I don't think you can keep me here. But I've just told you. That's the point I'm trying to make. I think we can do pretty much as we like. Right? 
Wrong. What's the challenge? We don't make charges. We're nice fellas. We'll offer you a job instead. For 500 pounds. Pays the laundry. That's a lot of laundry for a police job. It's not our money. It belongs to Rufus Blake. His, uh... His brother's a standing trial for murder. There they are. Lenny and Frank Blake, Rufus's brothers. They chew cement and spit concrete blocks. They run a big patch south of the river and make a mint of dishonest money. That's Joe Kilburn. He wanted a piece of the patch and got a kicking instead. Just a routine warning, but the Blakes were a bit out of practice. Joe died. Another sacrifice to uh, free enterprise. So that's what they're on trial for? Yeah, I read about it before you stole in the newspaper. Oh, borrowed. We've got lots of evidence, forensic, circumstantial. Normally we could sew it up on that, but the Blake brothers have got very good lawyers. And here's the man that pays them. He's called Rudyard. He runs everything. I'll make a note, McGill, and don't cross him, unless your family like funerals. Thank you very much. Uh, the paper said you need a eyewitness. They could be right for once. But you don't have one. Ah, uh, but we do. Rufus Blake. The chap you're working for. Took long enough. Here he is, Fred. Mr. Rufus Blake. The one who holds the coats while his brothers do all the work. It's about time. I want to see Franklin. I told this stupid screw yesterday. Which stupid screw? That one. I'll bring up three kids on what he spends for after shave lotion. You're a villain, Blake. Don't forget it. I mind your manners. You wait till like so, Franklin. You put your big stupid hands on me. <coughs> that floor is slippery, Fred. I've been meaning to mention it to somebody. Come on. Come on, you. from Big Dave. I'll fix it. There's a squeak going round the neck that Rufus Blake's been asking to see Franklin. Fred Gilly from Franklin's Lots just fetched him. Rufus knows what to do. He's been told. He just keeps saying he wasn't there when his brother's duff killed him. Have they charged him yet? Conspiracy. <laughs> him and Guy Fawkes. That won't stand up. Franklin must be getting past it. Rufus isn't like the other two. A dog could frighten Rufus. So he'll keep quiet, won't he? I'm holding Rufus Blake on a horoscope charge. All dreams. I can drop it just as quick. In exchange for a statement and eyewitness testimony in court that he saw his brothers kick Joe Kilburn to death. Well, he won't give you that. Yes, he will. Why should he? His own brothers? Well, that's the big reason. All his life he's wanted to be tough and clever, just like his brothers. Now's his chance. Well, why should he be tough and clever with his own brothers? There are other reasons. Let's be completely frank, Mr. McGill. If Rufus Blake puts his brothers away for a long time, there's a big fat Swiss bank account which only one man can get at. Rufus. Bingo. I'll be his then. And what do you want me for? You want me to make a deal? Not a deal. Um, a successful appeal to Rufus Blake's public spirit. What do you mean, vote for Rufus? I still don't see it. You will. Rufus wants a day to make um, arrangements. He'll need someone to hold his hand.
You took your time. I have bosses, remember? They like to be consulted. Well, this ape was beating me up. All show, Rufus. We don't want anyone to get the idea we're playing favourites. Thanks, Pat, that's all. Who's he? A friend of yours. The one you were asking about. Well, where'd you pick him up? He doesn't look much. You don't know him. I don't have much to do with the peasants. Well, if uh, you don't know him, nobody else on your patch will. Nor will Rudyard. Is he any good? You can ask him later. In the meantime, there are some formalities. In return for your cooperation with the proper authorities, I'm hereby empowered to drop the charges of conspiracy against you. Yes, yes, yes. When do I get out? Now, this cooperation means you'll present yourself at this station at 9 o'clock the day after tomorrow to make a signed statement, which you will later that day corroborate in court. Etc., etc., and all the rest of the lawyer mush. Now, when do I get out? I'm also advising you formally to remain in custody. You know I've got things to do. If you insist on being removed from custody, you should know that you're entitled to police protection. Protection? When I do the things I've got to do, I'll be safer in a rocket than one of your jails. A prisoner, a cop, a guard, and a quick knife in my back. No, thanks. Your refusal is noted. Well, that's it, Rufus. You want a day on the loose, and I want you on my side of the dock. But we both need some uh, insurance. There he is. We'll leave you to it. Cigarette. You don't look very bright, so I'll explain things slowly. You get 500 for driving and watching my back for one day. Oh, do you repeat that, please? You get 500. OK. The police will do it free. Yeah. Big flat feet making a noise. Making me easy to see, telling the world what I'm up to. Well, now you know I'm not going to tell the world what you're up to. But then that's a risk you take when you turn pigeon, isn't it? Oh, you are stupid. I'm not turning pigeon. I'm pulling one big smart stroke. Them inside and me outside. Holding close on half a million quid. No more fetch the car roof. No more get the coffee roof. No more you haven't got the guts roof. They'll be eating a lot of porridge while I'm laughing. Well, what's Rudy going to be doing while you're laughing? Big mastermind. He's another one. You know your trouble, Roof. You were born frightened. Well, I'm not. I'm telling you. Don't tell me. You're shaking in your boots. You watch me. We'll see who's shaking. Find yourself another boy. Oh, no. Franklin picked you and you'll stay picked. Or you'll be in trouble if I know Franklin. And that means I can trust you. Yes, yes, yes. Look, tell Big Dave, every time Rufus turns over in that little cell of his, Mr. Rudyard wants to know about it, right? Then tell Olsen and Joey Airport, and anybody else that knows Roof, just spread it about. You know, there's money in it. You don't have to know why. We don't even know why ourselves. Is he the job, then, this Rufus? We don't know yet. You brought me a long way, and you paid me a lot of money for something you don't know. It's my money. Piece of advice. They reckon you're good. A real weasel. Gun, knife, all these. So? You're down here because nobody knows you. Any money I pay you, you'll earn. It's not my type of work. It's well paid. Yeah, and where does the money come from? Protection, rackets, people getting razored. You must think of these people as taxpayers and yourself as a public servant. No, oh, get your own public servant. You saw what he's like. He's just a cheap, gutless pigeon. We've seen his brothers, too. And if you think Rufus is evil, you should meet them. They are animals. They belong in a cage. And you're going to help us put them there. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. You need all the favors you can get from someone like me, McGill. I need the money, too. But I don't need it that badly. I'm not going to take it this way. If we hang on to him, he'll keep quiet. 
If we let him stretch his wings, he'll put his brothers away for 20 years. What would you do, McGill, if you were a copper? I'm not a copper. Very well. If you want it this way. Most of the jobs you do are here in this country. We could make this country impossible for you. There are other countries. A call from us to your ex-bosses and American intelligence could make them just as impossible. Now, you two are really something. You're really beautiful. You just want my cooperation. That's it. Your uh, friendly cooperation. You're walking a tightrope here, aren't you? I'm going by the book. We had to let Rufus go. You were here. You heard us offering police protection. Yeah, I did. That was very smooth. Rufus wants a long rope, and you're it. There is one other thing, McGill. Uh, no guns. I'm not having anyone killed over a thing like Rufus Blake. Well, do I count? What about me? The police here manage without them. Use your fists. Eight o'clock tomorrow morning outside the jail. That's where you become a pigeon fancier. Just keep him alive for me. an hour before that buzz gets down the wire. After that, every fringe artist and small timer will be trying to make a day's wages, putting the BDI on Rufus Blake. you could do to see but junk? Well, won't attract too much attention. I thought you Yanks liked flashy cars. This one's for peasants. That's us. You, yes, all your life. I do better than this. Well, for 24 hours, friend, you're nothing. You're nobody. You don't even have a name. Don't you tell me that. Because you're a right nothing and my lot of governors over South London. Do you know we were taking 4,000 a week off the patch? 4,000. That's 12 in your money. 20% of Rudyard and the rest was all for us. Every week. Well, look where I got you. I can walk into any cafe or bookish shop in South London and say, my name's Rufus Blake and I open a cash box. No squawk, just open a till and stand aside. Now don't tell me I'm nothing. Listen, I'm going to keep you safe as long as I can because I think you're the greatest thing since Dillinger because I'm going to get a lot of money to do it. It's because if you get in any trouble, Buster, I'm in it too. Now, do you understand that? Let's just get it straight right now. I've bought you, me and Franklin. You just drive, nod your head and do as you're told. Now, take me to the Ulchester Hotel. There are not going to be any hotels. You're not going to go to any fancy hotels and have big breakfasts and steam baths. You're not going to do any of that stuff. That's why they're going to be looking for you. They turned him loose this morning, on his own. No transport. On his own? <laughs> well, well, well. Little roof, like a kid coming home from school. Into the first taxi he sees and up west for a good breakfast. I've covered the hotels. It'll be the Ilchester. No, I'll leave him loose for a bit. When he's had a good feed, bought himself a clean shirt, seen to his manicure, he'll go to Olsen's. Who? Olsen. Fur dealer. Hmm. The Blake boys use him as a bank. They keep quiet about it. <laughs> I'll tell you where Olsen's is. You can go and collect Rufus for me. All right. Olsen's a banker. The best there is. Not one of your backstreet pawnbrokers. Well, it looks legal enough. Straight as a telegraph pole. He even plays golf. Now, you remember where the car is. I know this beat better than you. Why don't you stop twitching? You bother me. Wake up, Blake. Now you get off your cloud. 
You're loose because you made a deal with Franklin to squeal. Now, if you want to remain alive, squealer, let's just do what we have to do. Let's get going. Take it easy, Mr. Olson. I just have a visitor for you. Hello, Olson. What's wrong with the back door? You worry too much. I'm legal. And Lenny? Frank? No complaints? I would have, if they were my brothers. Stick to banking, Olson. Leave preaching to others. Tell them what you want and let's move. Well, you'll have to excuse my friend. His nose is bad. Come on. I want the envelope with a Swiss bank here in it. And the loose change. 4,000 quid, I'll make it. That's right. Well, get it. Three of you, yes. One of you, no. It's our money. Ours. Not yours. The three of you. I keep straight bank. Make him open it. Why don't you do what he says? It's not your problem. Problem? <laughs> I open that safe to any slag who comes off the street and his brother's raising me. They're a lot wilder than he is. And they got more friends. A brother like that, they need them. You open that safe? You crazy idiot. What's the matter with you? Why don't you do what he says? Why risk getting hurt? Because of the percentage I get. I'm a banker. Both of you, you're wasting your time. I know. Olsen straight. No leads, no convictions, no record. We'll call the coppers. He'll open it for them. Laugh, Roof. Laugh. Even you wouldn't stoop that low. It's ringing now. Ask for Inspector Franklin. New Scotland Yard. If I can't have that money, nobody else will. And I don't play golf in prison, Olsen. A lot of money, a lot of years. Lenny and Frank used to wipe his nose. Not bad, eh? Brain's what you need. Right pair of maggots you turned out to be. Heads down in cheese, you didn't even have the guts to steal. Yes, Olsen speaking. Just a minute. It's Rudyard. He wants to talk to you. He doesn't know I'm here. Ask him! Oh, tell him I'm not here. Tell him you haven't seen me. Tell him yourself. Now, you go out of here first. Very slowly. Not on my own. You come with me. You'll sweat a lot more before you spend all that money. Hey, you go sell some furs or something. Do what I said. Very slow. Well, well. If it isn't Mr. Blake, Junior. Rudyard wants to see you, kidder. I'm not going. He just wants a little chat, like, you know, about pigeons. <laughs> champion. Stealing matches off old women's trays. He'd be on his own, you said. Easy meat. If you need help, say so. I don't need help, kid. Would you like to see? Come on, you've had some practice. You're being paid to do a job after you've done it. If you want to come and argue with me, you're welcome. Well, watch your mouth. You're paying me. You don't own me. If I was ownable, I'd be working in a shipyard like my stupid father. And his stupid father. Buying the form and a pint every Friday night. Get a chance of a bit of overtime, you know. Same difference. I'm the foreman, Sonny. And you're on overtime. And if Rufus has cleared the bank, he'll squeal and then bolt. I don't want to talk to him again. I don't want to see him again. We'll help you find him. After that, he's all yours. So, I thought it was a pretty good idea to act real scared and suck that hooligan into the office. Hmm. Really appreciate it. No, we work pretty good together. Funny, I didn't recognize that geezer they sent after me. 
And I know all Rudyard's mugs. Anything else? That's all right. What's up? He was a pro. He didn't look much. Well, don't be deceived by appearances. Ah, we can take care of him. You're doing pretty good, McGill. If you carry on like this, it'd be a big bonus in it for you. Yeah, I could sell you out, take the whole thing. Thank you. Thank you, Gap. Well, you're too late to be any use to us. Some coffee stall Burke lets them finish breakfast, then phones. Send somebody to tip his van over. It'll be a bit quicker next time. You'll never find them like this. The zoo, please. The what? That's another place they won't be looking for you. What do you got all this junk for? You'll find out, and you'll be pretty glad we have it when you do. Well, not 60 quid's worth. You should work for the tourist office. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll drop you at the zoo and you can wait for me there. Hey, they've got gorillas there. I'll meet you there later, we'll send Rudyard a postcard. Tell him his relations are all right. <laughs> You're not dropping me anywhere. Well, take an hour off. No. I'll square it with Franklin. No. Look, whatever he's got on you, he doesn't have to know. And I'll throw in a bonus, a couple of hundred. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? I've got to see a bird. But just go away, disappear. For an hour, I don't need any help. Man, so wonder you stayed alive this long. Don't you know what you can run into out there? Not this time. This is not one of your strip joint brasses. This is a nice, straight little bird. And none of Rudyard's peasants know anything about it. So just go away, disappear, please. Now, I mean it. This is very, very private. Hey, forget the zoo. Let's go to that parking lot at uh, Portland Square. If Rufus stays in one place longer than ten minutes, somebody will tell us about it sometime. Yeah, the trial wraps up tomorrow. If Rufus is going to pull a squeal, there's not much time left. I think Franklin's saving him. Somebody watching the girl? Yes, she's still at work. Girl? That's better, I like that. Where is she? Don't get in an uproar. She's a scraggy little straight bird. Works in a shop. Thinks Rufus is a commercial traveller. Very touching. Today's her afternoon off. She's straight, so we act straight. Tommy will tell her the tale. <laughs> What's so funny? Tommy here was a copper. Looks it and all, doesn't he? So, it's better if you stay here. I'll do the steering. Rufus will walk straight in. Tommy will arrest him. And it's all yours. Officer, I wonder if you can help us. Do you know this man? It's Richard. Richard Grant. Is he in trouble? Well, yes and no. Well, what is it? Well, it's nothing to get worried about, miss. Uh, if we can just ask him a few questions. But he's not here. Now, we have reason to believe he may be visiting you. I haven't seen him for two weeks, nearly three. Hmm. Tell me, Miss Wilmot, uh, did he have a lot of money to spend? He has a good job. He's area manager for a finance firm. Mm, quite a well-known one. I'm afraid I'm going to have to wait, miss. But if he isn't... If he hasn't done anything wrong... Just if... a few questions, miss. Now, don't you worry. Would you like some tea? That's very kind of you. He 
You London barons are all alike. Just sit around, wait for it to happen. Not me. I like a bit of action. You'll get it when Tommy brings Ruth Blake in. And I want that mug to put the choke on me at Olsen's and all. You'll get him. He's called McGill. Real mystery. He's a yank. Not bent, not straight. Works for himself. Not for long. I'll break both his arms. Did that to a fellow in the pool once. His mother still has to feed him. Like a baby. Has to do everything for him. You're not much good without your arms, you know. Can't put the choke on people. Yeah, well... Not long now. Very nice. Miss Wilmot? Yes? Um, your firm suggested I visit you. We we're making a market survey on consumer attitudes, and your boss, Mr. Bendix, recommended you. Well, it's not very convenient. I'm afraid you'll have to come back, sir. It'll only take a few minutes. No, I'm sorry, sir. I'm a police officer. I'm waiting for someone. Well, I made a special trip just to see you. I'd prefer you left, sir. Sorry. Can I make a telephone call? Um, no, I'd rather you didn't. Oh, there's no harm in that, not if you've come all this way specially. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Uh, I just have to call my boss. Hmm. Extension 7, please. Uh, this is McGill. Uh, yes, I'm at Miss Wilmot's now. Uh, she's engaged. Did you arrange to have an appointment? Definitely not. Not one of us. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. He's a phony. I've got Richard waiting to see you. No, he's not. It's another trick. It's another trick. I'm on the real police. He said to say Lake District. Where is he? Come on, get your coat. Let's get out of here. Some crummy sneak thief. Hello, Doug. Hello, One of Reggie's boys was waiting for you. I'll cut the fairy tales. You'll get paid. Just ask her. Richard, what's happening? Who was that man? He said he was a policeman. He wasn't, love. I'm helping the police. Well, why are we running away? Listen, I don't want to butt in, but don't forget the newspapers. Shut up. Look, it's a long story, but I am helping the police. And my big idiot says it'll all be in the newspapers. But I've got to stay undercover. That's about it. What about a bit of privacy? OK, but you make it fast. Go back to your room and don't go to work. I can't do that. I get the sack. 500 pounds? And there's plenty more. Now listen, tomorrow I want you to go and book a ticket to Switzerland. Remember when we were in the Lake District we used to talk about it? Are you telling me the truth? Of course I am. Look, I'll explain later. Listen, Switzerland, Geneva, the Palace Hotel. The Palace Hotel? Yeah. You'll be there, won't you? Tommy missed him. McGill conned him, then put him down. Tommy's getting old and fat. And unemployed. I told you. I should have gone. You'll get your chance. Right, I'll tell him. Franklin's on the move. Him and Jackson have just left. That's better. That's very good. If he goes anywhere near Rufus, we'll know about it. 
And he's bound to. He won't be able to keep away. He's too keen to wrap up. And when you're too keen, you come unstuck. Just make sure they don't lose Franklin. <laughs> What are we doing here anyway? I'm allergic to fresh air. Great, so are your friends, so they won't be looking for you here. You ever heard of botanical gardens? Flowers. The place gives me the creeps. Oh, you better get used to it. Because this is where we're spending the night. You're off a chump, not me. Well, then you just name me one hotel that's safe. Just one hotel. Now you're dead sure is safe. Those Olsons were staked out. And they were waiting for you at that girl's too, friend. You want to bet on a safe hotel? Hmm? And if we sleep out in that weather, we're gonna freeze to death. Even in this stuff. Oh, you're so bloody clever, just like my stinking brothers. Explaining everything like I was some half-wit kid. Well, I'm not. They're inside and I'm on the loose, so who's clever? Well, let's just keep it that way. We need some place to hide till dark. Where'd you dig this place up? I'm hungry. Please, can't you be quiet? Friends, we're uh, keeping a friendly eye on you. And who's tagging you? Nobody. Uh, there were three, but uh, nobody now. You're beginning to sound like Rufus. Nerves getting frayed, McGill. There's uh, a man at each end of the street. Anyway, why should we want to draw attention to you? Because you're cops. And cops love setups. There's some truth in that. No, I just wanted to have a look at our Rufus. He's pretty well terrified, and that's what I want. Thing is, he's terrified of the right people. He's outside Rudyard's long arm now, and I'm his only saviour. So he'll testify, loud and clear. Just deliver him. You just stay off my back. So, uh, you can count on it. 
Where did they lose Franklin? West Drayton. They're still looking. What else have we got? Not much. Oh, some kid phoned up, said he'd seen Rufus at the Botanical Gardens. <laughs> Forget it. It's all fresh air and grass. Rufus doesn't even know where it is. Hey, it's bitter out. If them two are on the dodge tonight, they'll get frostbite. What did you say? It's bitter. Out. And they won't use hotels. They've got to keep warm. And where there's botanical gardens, there's hot houses. That's where I'd go. Who'd have thought it? Smart little roof. Get your gear. Clever coming from the riverside over the ditch. My feet are soaked. Well, if I did anything else, you probably would have broken your neck. Right, only the boss takes a drink, and you're working. Or are you particular who you drink with? Both. You don't needle me, McGill. You're bought and paid for. Hey, I was right to come here, you know that? Imagine old Rudyard up all night, searching the DOS houses. <laughs> you just stay where you are. Your trouble, McGill. You're only half smart. That's right. If the other half was smart, I wouldn't be here with you. What are you getting out of this? Half a grand. For sticking your head out and getting lumps all over it. Real greengrocer. I draw that every week just for sitting around. Used to draw. Well, somebody else did all the work. So they're mugs and I'm smart. Like now. You're doing all the work. Hey, I'll tell you something funny. The boys always wanted me out of it. Buy yourself a little shop roof, they used to say. This business isn't for you. You haven't got it. Well, who's got the big slice now? Who's laughing? Well, I wouldn't laugh until after you finish singing that song tomorrow, Pigeon. Don't twist your lip at me, McGill. You're helping me, remember? For the money. Listen, you... if... Uh, what's the difference? Between us, 
I'll tell you nothing. Except I'm big time and you're small. Tell me people come here to lump these creepy flowers. They even smell bad. You stupid idiot! What's the matter with you? Your nerves are bad. You should see a doctor. That's where you brought me here, that's where you went. That's right, kidder. I've come to fetch you. In a box. Let me talk to you, I, I can explain. I'll pay you. Let me see Rudyard. I'll explain to him. I'll explain. Too late, kidder. Oh, oh, let me go. Please. Please. You've got to. I'll give him the money. Oh, I'll give him the money. <laughs> A pig in an alley. Send me, Ruth. Nobody lays hands on me. My brothers will kill you. I'll kill you. Brothers got life and no appeal. After as nice a piece of singing as I've heard in a long and appreciative career. Oh, glad you liked it. Oh, yes. When villains jump up and down on each other, all an honest copper can do is rejoice. I wonder how far he'll get. Geneva. We can deliver him as far as that. Dan lasted about ten minutes. Let's save the British taxpayer a few bobbing legal fees. Oh, uh, yeah. A lot of money for a day's work. That's more than I get. Well, uh, don't forget you have a pension to look forward to. Mm. Well, I'm thirsty. 
Hey, you're rich now. You can buy the beer. 